Hey, uh, Post readers, thanks for joining us today. Today in studio, we have the director and lead actors of the Canadian indie film Below Her Mouth. It makes its TIFF debut this year, and it's the first Canadian film to have an all-female crew. Welcome to Have Post, ladies. Thank welcome, you. welcome. Thank you. <laughs> so we are streaming live. If you have any questions for our guests, please let us know. But before you get into the movie, let's take a look at the trailer of Below Her Mouth. You come to girl parties often? I don't come at all. Can I change that for you? Oh. We've got to the hotel. I want to get married in the garden at the old mill. You didn't say goodbye last night. One drink. Take me somewhere. Hey, sweetie, did you call the planner about booking the wedding? I haven't had time. I don't want to think about my life. I'm memorizing every part of you. I've never done anything like this before. I want you to stay. incredibly bold, sexy, <laughs> steamy. Uh, April, you directed the film. Why bring Jasmine and Dallas's love story to life in this provocative way? We really wanted to stay true to real time and real life and when you meet somebody with this like frenetic, animalistic chemistry, you just can't help but stay in bed and discover each other and we really wanted to go into that world and explore that world through the eyes of a woman and what it's like for us when those things happen to us and what our bodies feel like and so the film's perspective is is through a female gaze and that's why we shot it that way. If people um, people who don't know about the movie what is it about? Describe to me what the film is about. It's about two women who are independently living their lives, one engaged and the other sort of living a rock and roll lifestyle and their lives collide and then they're basically they can't be torn apart and then the repercussions of what happens and the journey between them and the rest I can't divulge because it'll be right <laughs> too much away right yeah this happened and this happened yeah. 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 I mean it really is truly captivating from the very first scene when when we say bold and sexy and steamy that's what you're going to get with this mm -hmm. film w was that your intention April to sort of like capture the audience right off the bat <clears throat> definitely we didn't want to have any barriers so it was almost like you were in the room with them and that you're like a fly sitting on the wall and just witnessing what was happening. So we intentionally had no filter and it allowed for them to really be truthful to their inner, you know, inner truths and, and explore that and expose that. And it was really tender and really intimate and very raw, very honest. And we created a safe bubble on set and the, basically the results are on the screen. Yeah. So we obviously have the two lead actors of the film joining us today, Erica and Natalie. Erica, I want to start with you. This mm -hmm. is your film debut. Yes. What, what drew you to the role of Dallas? Why this particular role? Why this movie? Um, well, for a while I, I wanted to um, sort of take my career to a whole nother level. Um, and I feel like when this came along, I was like, I couldn't have like asked for a better sort of ex like first experience. Yeah. And um, it was just right for me, and I think that we all kind of agreed on that too. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it's incredible, incredible performance. Thanks like so the much. the room was packed at the screener the other night, and like I said, people just were captivated, you know, from very few seconds. Um, and Natalie, you know, people are familiar with you on Canadian television and film. Mm -hmm. What what drew you to this movie and and working with Erica and April? Uh, when I first read the script, I felt a lot of different things <laughs> and uh, obviously I recognized that it was a huge challenge for whatever actress took on the role of Jasmine and I, I really I was at a point in my career where I wanted to do that I wanted that challenge I wanted something that I could really dive into and go to a deeper level with we are streaming this live, so if you guys have any uh, comments or questions, let the let the guests know. Uh, Annalise says, "You ladies are fabulous." So, <laughs> <laughs> love it, yeah. love it, guys. <laughs> fab, fab all yeah. around. 
Fabulous Five. Yeah. 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 Uh, you guys are having a lot of fun sort of uh, during the press and the media media press for this movie, right? You've gone, um, what's the feedback like uh, been for the, the movie so far? The feedback's really been surprising, I think. It just that how touching people are really connecting to the film in ways very personally. Like, and, and it's just so surprising and fantastic because our original intention was to be able to bring that special spark and that special moment that happens between two people. It's so hard to depict that cinematically and just in general to describe that feeling of love and lust. And people connect to it because they've either been through it or they see it and hope to have it. And mm -hmm. it's just beautiful. Like, I feel like people leave and they just say, love is love, you know, yeah. and there's a sense of freedom and For everybody sure. leaves really, you know, upbeat. Uh, April, you talked earlier about that safe level. Um, this was an all-female crew. Mm -hmm. That was your intention. How did you go about sort of putting that crew together, and why did you want to make it all-female? Well, we wanted to make it all-female because it was really our original goal was to, like I said, bring a female perspective and gaze of what it's like to go through these incredible emotions and this raw chemistry and what women do behind closed doors in sexy times <laughs> and what, you know, what we, we express and what we feel like. So to do that, we brought on an all-female crew, top to bottom, like uh, ground floor and all keys. Mm -hmm. and. Everybody had their own female touch, whether it be camera movement, editing, the lighting, the costume, everything had that female touch, so it really created as close as possible to the truth of our original goal, which was the female perspective, and, and the, yeah, and that's why we did it, and also to help our actresses and allow them to feel really supported and comfortable on set and have no barriers, so it was, you, you guys can speak to what it was like yeah, on set. Yeah, I feel like we all understood each other very emotionally and uh, like I've said before I think it wasn't just us but we were all in it together yeah. and we were all yeah. sort of like falling in love together and mm -hmm. went through all the motions so I feel like you never felt alone in those moments mm -hmm. so and that was the priority obviously to like make us feel comfortable yeah and in all the intimate scenes everyone was always so supported you know, we felt so encouraged to go and take chances and mm -hmm. take risks. Mm -hmm. There was, everyone was behind us on set. Um, yeah, it was incredibly special. Yeah, I mean, Nicholas, uh, branching off that, Nicholas, one of our readers, asks, did you notice, a, you know, a big difference in atmosphere on set with all female crew as opposed to one with a mixed gender? Yeah. I, I did. I mean, it was like we're all girls. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, I, it, it was like, it, you know, yeah, it, it was a lot of fun. It was like the sisterhood. Um, and I think everyone felt like we were a part of something special, yeah, like creating an opportunity for women. A lot of, a lot of our crew had you know, they were learning Green. to do yeah. jobs. Yeah, like the curiosity was there and every, everyone was just very like, yeah, like you very said. Very eager because yeah. they hadn't had those opportunities before to work yeah. some of those positions. Mm -hmm. So it was exciting for mm -hmm. everyone to be a part of that. And it was fluid on set. We had like this yeah. really fluid, there was no like department working on, there, all the departments sort of melded into yeah. one yeah. and everybody was helping one another. We only had one key. <clears throat> grip and elect and one swing. It was a very small crew to begin yeah. with. <laughs> and then when there was sex scenes, it was close. It was like four of us. So it was yeah. very small, but it was yeah. fluid. Yeah. And everybody helped one another yeah, out. Yeah, everyone helped mm -hmm. out with whatever they could. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it, yeah, putting a movie together, big or small, it does take a village. It does take a crew. And to find an yeah. all-female, all-women, like how, mm. how long did that take you the to sort of... The hunt was on. Yeah. So it took about four months, to be yeah. honest. It was yeah. really difficult to find a sound, a sound person and a boom op. Those were the two positions that we really had to, you know, it was, it was difficult, but the word spread quickly because there are so few women in film right now, the few that were hired were like, oh, I know, you know, this elect that she's really available. And then the, the camera crew knew other women that were involved. Yeah. So the, yeah. the community, it seemed, was really strong in their outreach and bringing more women to the team. Amazing. We're getting a stream of questions here. So let me just, um, <laughs> uh, so... Gina asks April, as a female director, yes. you're an inspiration for wem many women looking to get into film. Mm. Who are some of your mentors, idols, and favorite directors? Oh, that's very amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, my, I, you know, I was in Cannes and I saw Andrea Arnold's latest film, mm. American Honey, and I haven't been the oh, same since. <laughs> I cannot just stop thinking mm -hmm. about it. It's just 
unreal. There was moments in that that were so alive, and I just so that's somebody I aspire to, and I I've just recently watched that film. And there's a lot of Canadian superstar women out there, <laughs> not necessarily in film, but I'm working with Adrienne Mitchell on a series Bellevue, and she's like a creator, a writer, a director, and then, you know, there's the team at Killjoys. Like, there's, there's amazing people mm -hmm. out there that are doing phenomenal things. I just feel like the women that are out there just aren't on a platform, so we don't really know, you know, I think if we're celebrating more women in these powerful positions and we start putting a spotlight on them, they're around. You just have to, you know, yeah. hunt them down. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, it's funny that you mentioned that because a recent report from Telefilm Canada says that only 17% of directors were female, um, I think it was last year. So, I mean, do you think we're, we're doing enough to up those numbers? Are we improving? And what can we do to get that, you know, Going. a bigger percentage? I yeah. think that right now there's a spotlight on it and mm -hmm. it's a lot of buzz and it's all people mm -hmm. are talking about. And I just hope that it's not a passing trend or a hot button talk, but I really hope that people continue to commit and there needs to be action you know we need to have this long-term goal because I feel like it's also the younger generation of filmmakers if they don't see examples of women in key positions they don't know that it's attainable and I think it's important to put those people on pedestals or spotlights so that these fresh young like gung-ho filmmakers right out of school don't start in a small business but they aspire and go straight to a director's position whether that be a short or a commercial something but just so that they know it's possible and mm -hmm. they know they can get there, but it does take commitment and mm -hmm. you know continued support mm -hmm. and always hiring and and you know and definitely supporting the community as a whole. Yeah, I wonder what your thoughts are though, because you know speaking about you know an all uh, female-led crew, female cast, you know movies like um, the recent remake of Ghostbusters, all mm -hmm. female cast, and they got a bit of backlash for mm -hmm. making it all female-led. Mm -hmm. You know, some people complaining that it was sort of, you know, not paying homage to the original, and uh, but you know, all f female-led movies have been around for years. So mm -hmm. why do you think people are still have that? you know, unwillingness to adjust to, to that. What do you think? I think Ghostbusters was a particular thing. So it's yeah. like, yeah. now yeah. that you've made it Ghostbusters, don't remake Ghostbusters. Too, like it's yeah, a, exactly. It's, so it's, like, it's just it's a like, fan favorite. It's a different yeah. take on it, right? <laughs> yeah. So I feel like, but also when you hear like, yeah, we're going to make a like, new Ghostbusters, if they would put men in that position or like as actors, I think people would bash it. Anyway. As well, because it's a remake. Yeah, it's a remake. You know, yeah, yeah, exactly. That's a good point. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think so too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's just a different take on it. And I thought that it was a really smart move to do that. So. Yeah. Erica, I wanted to talk about, mm -hmm. uh, you know, sort of your experience w w in the modeling industry mm -hmm. and now to film, because many people know you, you know, it, modeling in men's campaigns, right? Right, right? So that's where you got your start mm -hmm. in Sweden. So how did that help you in any way to prep for this role, um, you know, coming into this movie? Well, when I started, I just wanted, I just told myself that I wanted to be authentic and true to who I am and just like, at the end of the day, it's just a job, right? So, um, I don't think in gen, well, I don't think like specifically like as Dallas, mm. um, it's two different things. Like I think just being on set, on a movie set, the only thing that I really brought with me was just to be like comfortable in front of the camera and like you know like those basic things about like finding the light and you know all of that but it's just like acting and modeling is just two completely different things right so um, yeah I mean I think it's just like the basic things that I took with there's one point in the film though when Dallas says uh, she hates the label tomboy she's mm -hmm. like I hate that label mm -hmm. um, I mean d do you think do you think that's sort of like it an old term? Do you think we're getting better at sort of expanding our vocabulary when it comes to, you know, sort of those gender fluid issues and whatnot and seeing I, more of that I on screen? I think we're getting there yeah. for sure. Um, but also, I don't really know if you should put attention to it or just like, because I'm just me and I'm just like, mm. I don't really mind being called a tomboy. Like, it's like, mm. it's, that's just a, you know, kind of like I even describe myself as that. Mm. So it's not anything that like really bugs me, I guess. But <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't know. Like I just think that it's like it's it's kind of blurry. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. the like 
all of that. So, yeah, yeah I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's interesting that we, like, have this need to label. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. All the time. Yeah. You know, it's like yeah. whatever is a little bit different, we try to find some way to label it. Yeah. Well, I feel this is what, you know, um, Jasmine is struggling with in the movie, right? Mm -hmm. um, were you drawn to that, the fact that, you know, like a lot of people, she struggles with her identity, obviously mm -hmm. her sexuality. Is that what drew you to the role, Natalie? Yeah, I think, like, the, the theme of, uh, like, authenticity. We mm -hmm. speak of this a lot. Um, and being true to who you really are. And, you know, with Jasmine, her sexuality, like, she, she loves Ryle. There's love there. But the, the thing with Dallas is that it's stronger. There's yeah. a stronger pull. That's, it, it ignites something in her that's much more powerful. And so it's about having to make choices. Do you do what's safe and what you've been used to or do you really take a risk and be bold and do what's more passionate and more um, more you yeah I mean without giving too much away about the film do you feel like Jasmine accomplishes that at the end sort of living a true life an authentic authentic life towards the at the end I think she definitely has a revelation about mm -hmm. um, living more for herself yeah, I absolutely. think they both do. Yeah, yeah. they both, they both yeah. do. Okay, we're getting uh, some questions in. <laughs> Gina says, Erica, you did a great job for your first acting role. What are some of the challenges you faced in the filming, if any? Oh, thank you. Um, I think, hmm. I was the biggest challenge. <laughs> <laughs> I I think working just with like, <laughs> yeah, Natalie. Yeah, April, both of them. No, no I think, honestly, the auditioning part was yes, like that's true. Oh, that yeah. is yeah, right. If you're not I, used to that, yeah, it was mm -hmm. like I had no idea what I was doing. Like I was <laughs> just like, what is this? And like that was a challenge, definitely. And then I think you get more. I mean, when you actually like when you get the role, you kind of feel more confident because you have like the trust and like people believing in you. So you're like, okay, I need to work on this right now. Like you know, that's. It's just like you feel more relieved, mm -hmm. but the auditioning process was like really challenging. Yeah. I was like, <sighs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, going through, through the that. motions and like all those scenes that they made me do. It was just like a roller coaster, like this. Mm -hmm. Like I, I can't even remember. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's a blur. Yeah, it's a blur. Yeah, yeah. it came out <laughs> like this. Yeah, she was like, I was like, wow, I couldn't even <laughs> eat that day. Remember, I was Booked. like, <laughs> yeah. we knew you had it in you. Yeah. yeah. You're Jennifer, just pushing me. Jennifer says you make Sasky proud, Natalie. Oh yeah. And um, <laughs> <laughs> this is fun. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this interaction. Yeah. yeah. Um, Chelsea says you're amazing. So proud of you. Uh, what's next, April? For what's you. What's next? Yeah. I'm trying to decide what's next. <laughs> I'm not sure future-wise, and I'm going to in a week from now. I'm going to shoot a series, Bellevue, which I mentioned, mm -hmm. which is a f fabulous dark mystery crime mm. series. It's a mini-series by Adrian Mitchell, and I'm shooting with Kim Noyan, the one, the director who did War Witch. It's a fabulous directing team, and I can't wait, starring Anna Paquin. But other than that, Amazing. I don't know. Amazing. Yeah. Well, good luck with the film. Guys, it's Thank debuting you. at TIFF this year, and it's going to be released in February of next year. Check it out. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for having us. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs>